Hello and welcome to the second video in the NPMS National Plant Monitoring Scheme website introductional videos. These have been updated to reflect the new website in 2016, which has had some minor tweaks and cosmetic changes to hopefully make the website easier to use. This second video in the series is just about creating plots for you to enter your, your plant data and your environmental data against. So this video assumes that you've already gone through the process of signing up to the website, logging in, selecting your square and requesting it. So we carry on from that point really and we'll briefly overview the requesting of squares as well during this video. So I'll just log in using the login option on the menu at the top of the page and as before my username and password are remembered by the web browser so all I need to do is click the login button. So previously we used the request a square tab here, or sorry, uh, menu option to choose the square that we wanted and put in a request for it. Now if I choose the create plots and enter data option here, I get this drop down menu. And the most the important one for this video is view squares and create plots. So I'm going to choose that option. So this just takes a little while to load the plots and squares that you've already got. Um, so I'll just, I'm just going to explain what we've got here. Um, firstly, you can ignore this link here unless you need to do um, more requesting of squares or something like that. But essentially, you don't need to worry about that link now. Um, so what we have here in this table are a list of squares which I have had allocated to myself or requested. Uh, one three and for one of those squares um, I've created plots which I've already used last year in my own square that I surveyed for the MPMS as a volunteer um, so that's why we've got these plots feet out here and they will nest under the square which they relate to so they're all beneath SU42.7 so they're all plots that have been created in that square for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to focus on the top two squares um, for which there are no plots currently created. One of these squares I requested in the previous video and it's not yet been approved by the NPMS coordinator. So I will just show you for a moment what happens if I attempt to add a plot to this square. So it should be this square is the one which has not been approved yet. So if I click add plot, which is the first step of creating plots against a square, I get this little message here saying this square is awaiting approval so it's not possible to add plots to it presently. So that's just saying you know please wait to create your plots because this request that you've put in for the square has not yet been approved. Um, so we can ignore that for the rest of this tutorial. So the one we'll be focusing on is this one NR4651 which is a, a square on Ina um, in, the, in the Hebrides. So we're going to assume that I've got some plot information that I've gone to the field, I've decided where my plots are going to be, recorded information for those plots. Um, this video will just focus on creating those plots in the system because that's the first step. The second step being recording the plant and environment, environmental information against those plots, in other words entering your yearly data that you've collected. So the option that we want is just add a plot. I could also edit the landowner information which is basically information about access permissions and things like that which will be stored against the square and which could be useful um, when the square might be transferred to a new surveyor in the future. But we are just going to click this add plot option for the moment. So we'll wait for the plot creation screen to load up and that's what we have here. So I will just scroll down so that we can see more of the, the plot options that we have. Um, so I should say that this process needs to be gone through for each of the plots that you create in a one kilometre square. However, this process only needs to be done once per plot, because once you've created the plot, that will be stored in the system. And for each year that you survey the square, you will just then select that plot and enter the new year's data. So this process only needs to be gone through in the first year that you visit a square or the first time you record a plot. 
as you remember, if you've been out to the square that you've been allocated and you've read the, the guidance book, there are two different types of plot. One of them is a square plot and one of them is a linear plot. So if we focus on square plots for a moment, we have um, two types, one which is five by five metre square plot for most habitats except woodlands and the 10 by 10 metre plot for woodlands. So I'll just choose the um, more standard square plot for most habitats for the moment. So we have here several options. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I won't choose expert mode. Expert mode, if you tick the box, give you a couple more, gives you a couple more options. They're not, there aren't many extra options, but um, there is a second video available just going over the options that are available for expert mode. I'll keep that switched off for the moment though. So here we firstly enter the plot label. We've asked, we encourage people to number their plots just to make it easier to marry up. Field survey information and the plot when they input the data. We've also, you can also put the information here about the southwest corner of the plot if you had a, a GPS reading from the field or if you're able to estimate it accurately from the map. We also have some environmental information here that you can enter, which you hopefully would have attempted to record on your survey form. But the main part of creating a plot is placing it on the map. So this map window here is the same as the others within the MPMS website in that it's based on Google and you have um, two options in the top right hand corner of the map. One of them in common with the select a square map or request a square map is the double headed arrow which allows you to hold down your left mouse button and move the, the map around. Likewise the zoom bar on the left hand side of the map is exactly the same in that you can just zoom it about. You can use these arrows here to also move the map in, in that way if you prefer that to clicking and dragging. So if we're going to create a plot in this one kilometre square, we may find it useful to change the backdrop. So we have this blue tab here with the white cross. If we click that, that gives us the option of having a hybrid map with the satellite backdrop and some overlay roads and other information just the satellite information. Um, I'll leave it in the hybrid mode because that's generally most useful. So we can minimize that. The next thing is to zoom in to the location where we recorded the plot that we wish to create. So in this case I'll just assume it's some sort of grassland or more than plot. So we'll probably want to zoom in to the maximum extent that we can. Um, and whilst the double headed arrow is selected, we can obviously zoom, uh, sorry, drag the map around. So for the moment, I'm just going to assume I've done some sort of lowland grassland plot, and I'll just place it in this area here. So in order to create a plot in this simple mode, we need to ensure that this plot icon here is selected. So it's a little square box representing a plot with a, a mouse arrow. So if I click that, now that's selected, I can click on the map anywhere and it will create a, a representation of the plot. In this simple mode, it's not, the plot is not play, is not drawn to scale. Um, but you'll notice that the grid reference at the centre of the plot um, to a metre accuracy is given there. Now, if you had a GPS unit in the field or were able to estimate a GPS, uh, sorry, a grid reference from your, your phone or an OS map and you may be able to use that information along with clicking on the map and using the satellite imagery to try and place your map, to try and place your plot, sorry, on the, on the map accurately. Um, once you've clicked, you can click somewhere else to replace the plot and every time you click, it will recenter the map to put the plot that you've created in the centre of the screen. It can be a bit off-putting sometimes, but if you know it's going to do that, it's, uh, it's your warning is going to expect. So I'll stick with it down here in this area. So if I click there, it will just put that in the centre of the screen for me. And then I can check that the script reference here is uh, what, uh, roughly what I would expect in field information. Um, if you have taken a, a very accurate GPS reference in the field, you can also type that into the plot. So if I change this in the way that 
changing the last two digits of the easting and the northing um, as you need to do, and then press enter. And then sorry, click, click outside here somewhere. Then it will jump to that location. So if I zoom out, I have just edited the right number, so it's kept it within the one kilometer square, but it's jumped over there. So obviously only do that if you have a high quality grid reference or to type into that box. In general, it's probably going to be easier to estimate where you put the plot by zooming into the map and then using the generated grid reference to compare to any readings you took in the field or estimated. So, of course, you need to make sure again that that plot option is selected if you're going to click on the map and create the plot. So that is basically the plots, um, the plot creation method. Um, you can also um, add a sketch to the plot. Um, we ask everyone to do a sketch in the first year to help relocate the plot in the future, particularly if the plot changes hands to a new surveyor. However, additional sketches can be uploaded in the future. So even though you've added one sketch here, it doesn't mean that you can't do extra ones in the future, although you do not need to do a new sketch every year unless you want to. Um, you also have the free text field here to write in whatever you want, and you also have a sensitive plot icon here, which means that plant data of sensitive species will only be shared um, at 10 by 10 kilometers, but that's only for extremely rare species, which are unlikely to come up in your plots. So now if I click Submit, that plot will be created and it's saying there, uh, thank you, your records have been saved to the database, which is great. And it's just going to reload this page here and it should now show me the plot that I've just created here, which is exactly what we would have expected. So I can go back in and edit details if I want to. Um, in the future, once I've saved environmental information, plant information against that plot, I will lose the ability to edit that plot because it's taken then that that plot is fixed and the only thing I will be able to do then is to view the details or add additional sketches which is why down here against my plots that I surveyed last year I don't have the option to edit but I do have the option to view the, view the plot details or to add additional sketches. Um, at this point I that wasn't an, act, um, an exact plot location that I wanted to if, if I've done it wrong, for instance, then I could also delete the plot. But I'll leave it there for the moment because it will be useful for me to, se to select that at the next stage when I in input the data in the next video. So if I just go back in and edit this plot, because I want to also show you about creating linear plots, and all I need to do then is just change this to the linear plot option here. And notice here it's defaulted to the standard backdrop but I'm going to change that again to the hybrid backdrop so I can see what's going on better and if I zoom out here now I've changed because I've changed the plot type to linear plot it's it's um, removed the plot that I'd created previously so now if I wanted to place a linear plot that I'd created say along this stream I would just click in a, a new location here ensuring, of course, that that plot creation icon is selected there. I can minimise that menu again. Because at the moment I'm in the simple um, uh, plot creation mode, I'm not in expert mode, to keep things as simple as possible, the linear plot is just still represented by a box, and the idea is that you just place that in the middle of your, your linear plot that you created. If you went into expert mode, you would be able to create a more detailed representation of an actual linear plot, which will be dealt with in a separate video. But in order to keep things simple, we've just represented the linear plot by a small square again. And again, the grid reference there is just the center of the linear plot. However, because I've changed the option here to a linear plot, I now have these additional options to put in the two ends of the plot. If I collected that information in the field rather than the southwest corner. So that's basically very similar to creating a square plot. And now if I submitted this, it would update the information that was presented before on this overview page. 
I'll wait for it to load. And now you can see that it's saying that that plot is a linear plot rather than a square plot. And you'll notice also, because I did not enter a plot number, it's not said plot 1 or plot 2, it's just said plot. And that's why we recommend numbering your plot, so it's much easier to relate the field data to the data entry stage. If you don't number the plots, then you'll just have to rely on the long grid references, which is a lot less user-friendly than actually having a label that you've created. So that is basically the process of creating a plot. I will also overview the expert mode in a separate video. Thanks.